Hi, I'm Andy Fitzell, longtime associate with Steve Smith, and I'm happy to be here today. And during Steve's comprehensive course, he talked a, a lot about personality types and brain types. And there's 16 different brain types, and today I'm going to show you how those different brain types use their body or use their motor, motor skills uh, differently. So there's 16 brain types, but out of those 16 brain types, there's four groups of motor movement or how those types use their body. So the first type we're going to talk about is fine motor skilled. Now when I talk about someone who's fine motor skilled, that means they're genetically wired to want to use from their fingertips to their elbows. And they're also very good with their eyes. The types that are good with their fine motor skills are STs, and ST stands for, stands for sensate thinker. Now, a sensate is someone who's very practical. They're in the moment. They're in the here and the now. Thinkers tend to process things a little more analytically, so they use their brains very well. So if you're an ST, you're going to want to use your, from your finger to your elbow before you use any other part of your body. NTs, intuitive thinkers, now intuitives are a little bit more uh, in the future. They want to see the big picture. They want to see the whole product. They don't tend to put things into parts the way an S would. An NT also is very analytical and they're going to use the fine motor skills from the finger to the elbow more than any other part, any other part of their body. So STs and NTs are going to play with this link. An SF is someone who's gross motor skilled. So a sensate feeler. F stands for feeler. So the feelers tend to process or make their decisions based on gut instinct. They want to feel it through. They don't think it through as much. So SFs use their body very well. They're, they're very good with the large muscle groups of their bodies, the legs, the trunk, the shoulders, okay, as opposed to an NT or an ST using the forearm. The next group is an NF, an intuitive feeler. So they're intuitive. They like to see the big picture. They process their decisions by feelings. NFs, the first thing they want to do is actually go to speech and hearing. So they're very good with languages, with speech. I'm an NF, an intuitive feeler. But they tend to have more of a combination or mixture of the fine and gross motor skills. So they can work on the two of them very well together. Um, so if we break this down now how it relates to tennis, someone who is an ST or an NT is going to want to use their form a lot. So for example, Roger Federer is fine motor skilled. He's an intuitive thinker. So every once in a while, you'll see Roger gets a little quick with this link, and he can start to spray some forehands. Or on a volley, an ST or an NT tends to come to the net and want to play with this link instead of leaving it alone. So it's really important for someone who is fine motor skilled to learn to use their body better, their large muscle groups, and they have to learn to leave this still on a lot of shots. They're going to be very good on the serve where they want to be loose through here. But a little bit more, they could be, tend to be wristy on their ground strokes or their volleys. Someone who's an SF, a sensate feeler, they're going to use their body very well. So they're going to be gross motor skilled. An example of a gross motor skilled tennis player is Serena Williams. She's very good at using her body. Also, Lindsay Davenport. They use their body very well. So it's easy to teach someone who's gross motor skilled, for example, a two-handed backhand. They're able to coil their body very well and then unwind the body very well. So it's important to teach them how to use their fine motor skills. There's all kinds of drills you can do. For example, someone who's gross motor skilled and working on the serve to get this link working for them properly, you may just have them stand facing the net where they take their body out of it and just have them practice using their forearm a little bit more. So that's just an example of how to get someone who's gross motor skilled to use their fine motor skilled. Um, so when it comes down to it, uh, it's the way you learn. The way that you learn is going to be important so that you gross motor skilled people work on their fine motor skilled, fine motor skilled people work on their gross motor skilled. So we've covered, in summary, we've covered the four different groups. We've got fine motor skilled for the STs and the NTs. We have gross motor skilled for the SFs. And we have the mixture of the two, the gross and fine motor skilled, for the NFs, the speech and hearing. So there's so much to this, so much more to this. My mentor, Vic Braden, has worked very closely with a man named John Neednagel. He has a website called braintypes.com. So I suggest if you want to learn about this further, that you check out braintypes.com. And also anything out there written by Vic Braden is going to be an excellent resource for you.